When it comes to text animations, people usually tend to add node after node after node, even for the simple things. But you do have the option to use just the text node to achieve simple and cool animations. And the key to that is the shading tab. For the example that I'm going to show you, I'm going to go to the shading tab and enable one of the shading elements. This will give me a red outline around the text. But if I go to line style and change it from solid to dash, I get a dash line, which I can increase the thickness to achieve a different shape, which I can also animate if I want. And if I change the appearance from text outline to border fill, I get a rectangle, which again can be animated however you see fit. For example, if I do not want to envelop the whole text, I can change from text to characters, and then I have individual boxes around my characters. And the best part about using multiple shading elements is that you can animate them independently. For example, in shading element one, I'm going to decrease the opacity at frame zero, set a keyframe, go to frame 40, for example, increase the opacity, then go to shading element number two, set a keyframe for extend horizontal, go to frame zero and decrease it to make it disappear. Then open the spline editor, select the opacity, just move the keyframes and have two complete separate animations. And obviously you can combine them with other shading elements or other options inside a text node to achieve different combinations. But if you want more options and effects that the text node does not have, then adding extra elements can improve your animation drastically. For example, if you want to create an abstract liquid animation, just bring in a drip node, a displacement node, and a fast noise node. Connect them and change the settings to your liking. And maybe also add a prism blur node with one color removed. And now you have a trippy text animation. But if you do use extra elements and you end up with a huge node tree and you need or want to change a node in that huge node tree, you really do not want to waste time searching for a specific node. So when you create text animations with multiple nodes of the same kind, for example, if you use 10 text nodes that each have their own unique animation, all you need to do to keep track of them is to right click on one of them and select rename or pressing F2 on the keyboard. This will not only help you stay organized in the future if you want to change something in that animation, but also others if you send that animation to somebody else or you work in a team. Now sticking with organization for a bit, your on-screen organization is as important as your nodes organization. And to stay organized on screen, click on the viewer and press Ctrl G or Command G if you're on a Mac to bring up the guidelines. And as you can see, we have an indicator for horizontal orientation and one for vertical orientation and two types of border indicators, which will help you frame your animation to have a more pleasant design. But if you want to be even more precise about your on-screen organization and the design of your animation, then the grid node will be your best friend. It has options for you to change the number of rows and columns, the shape of the lines, the color of the whole grid, and even options to help you with 3D space orientation. Now let's move on to probably one of the best tools that DaVinci Resolve has to offer when it comes to text animations. And these tools are the modifiers. You right click on any option, go to modify with and choose one of the modifiers that you need for your desired effect. For example, if you want to modify each letter individually and let's say you want them to move independently, you simply right click the text box and you already have a set of modifiers. You choose follower for this letter by letter manipulation effect. You go to the modifiers, you change the order from automatic to left to right and increase the delay to around three. Next, you go to the shading tab, scroll down until you see position, open the menu up and you have offset. Let's place the playhead anywhere in the timeline and set a keyframe for offset. Path one will open automatically, but you can ignore it. So double click to close and double click on follower to open it back. Next, move the playhead back at frame zero and let's move the Y axis to the left so we can move the text 
away from the screen. Let's play it back. And there you have it. But this is not all what the modifiers can do, because the best part about them is that you can combine multiple modifiers to achieve different effects, to some extent. For example, let's reset the offset by double clicking it, then right click, modify width and choose XY path. Now we have a modifier affecting another modifier and we have two activated keyframes. So let's deactivate them, double click to reset and right click on the X axis, choose modify width and choose shake. Press reset a few times to get a different random value and adjust the settings to your liking. And now if you play it back, we have individual characters shaking with excitement. But if you want to go nuts with a prism blur and you use the shake modifier on position and aberration distance, you have now a cool text pump effect. Now, earlier I talked about the importance of renaming your nodes to keep your node tree organized when working with huge complex animations. Now let me show you how instances can save you time when creating huge complex animations. In order to create a node instance, right click on your desired node, choose copy, then right click on the empty space and choose paste instance instead of paste or control shift V or command shift V if you're on a Mac. And now we have our instance and in the inspector, you can see green boxes around almost every setting we have indicating that our values are linked between the source node and the instance node. Now let me link my instance to the merge. And now let me show you an example of how I would use instances. With the instance node selected, I'm going to go to the sheeting tab, right click on the red channel and choose the instance color group to unlink all the color channels and also the alpha channel. Now I'm going to change the color. Next, I'm going to go to layout, right click on center and the instance. Next, I'm going to right click on the center again, but this time I'm going to choose modify with and I'm going to choose shake. I'm going to go to the modifiers, hit reseed, decrease the smoothness, increase the minimum, and decrease the maximum. Next, I'm going to add a transform node after my instance. Right click on this center, modify width, and choose XY path. Go to the modifiers, reset X and Y, right click on X, and choose again shake. I'm going to reseed it, increase the smoothness just a little bit. Increase the minimum and decrease the maximum. And if I play it back, now I have a completely independent animation. Now let's say I want to change the font in all text nodes. Normally, if you'd used copy paste, you'd have to change each node individually. But with instances, I just go to the instance or the source node, go to my text tab, choose font and change the font and maybe increase the size or the tracking. Basically, instancing a node lets you reuse that node in a different place in the animation or for a different purpose if you change it a little bit, but keep the previous settings of the source node. One use case scenario I can give you here is if you do a fully animated explainer video. You create your assets and then instance them throughout the node tree. Now, speaking about using nodes throughout the node tree, using separate transform nodes in your animation can help you tremendously, especially if you've used modifiers on the position of a text node or its size and so on. For example, if I have the position of my text animated with shake, I cannot change its value. And if I deselect the keyframe, it disables the modifier completely. So if you want to keep your animation that is generated by your modifier, but still want to animate the text on the screen, you drag in a separate transform node and do your animations with that. Now sticking with dynamic animations for a bit, all the cool text animations and all animations you see have one secret. And that secret is custom keyframes. So let's close the inspector and open up the spline editor and select our keyframes. Control F to bring everything into view. And let's take a look at what we have in the keyframe menu. Let me select all the keyframes first. And we have smooth, linear, invert, step in, step out, reverse, set loop, set ping pong, set relative, select all which we just did by clicking and dragging over the keyframes, click append, time stretch, shape box, and show keyframe markers. Out of all these, you're probably going to use set loop or set ping pong. Let me show you how this one works. So this is set ping pong and it creates a looping animation. Same goes for set loop. 
But if you want to create your own custom keyframe animation, you will have to manipulate each keyframe individually. For example, I'm going to select the first keyframe, press S on the keyboard to smooth it out, and I'm going to grab the handle and drag it up. Then I'm going to go to the second keyframe, the middle one, press S on this one too. I'm going to grab its right handle and drag it out. Now let's see how this animation looks. Okay, let's go even further. I'm going to select the last one, press S on the keyboard, and I'm going to drag up the left handle and a bit to the left. Now let's check this one out. Now I want to add another keyframe in between the first and the second one. So I'm just going to click on the existing keyframe line, move the point where I want it to be. And I'm also going to add another keyframe right after the last one. Now let's play this back and see our new animation. Now all that is left for you to do is to play further with your keyframes until you reach your desired animation. And finally, once you have your desired result, it's time to save it as a template to use it for later or to send it to somebody else. So in order to do that, select all your nodes, right click on any of them and go to macro. Then create macro. And this is your macro tool menu. First, let's give it a name. Next, let's close all the lists and go to path one and disable it. Leaving it enabled or disabled does not affect your animation. So just leave it disabled. Next, we have our path one displacement. This one is a keyframe we set in the animation. So we're going to leave it on. Next, I'm going to open up title one and choose the options I need to have as controls in the final template. So I'm going to close image because I don't need it from the text, which is related to the text tab. Image was related to the image tab. I'm going to choose style text. This is your text box where you type in your text. Then I'm going to choose font and style. Style is responsible for bold, italic and so on. Then I'm going to close text. From layout, I'm going to choose just center. From transform, I don't need anything. And from shading, I'm going to scroll down and choose red one, green one, blue one and alpha one. These are your color channels and your alpha channel. I'm going to close this one also. Then I'm going to go to file, save as, and by default is going to go into your app data, roaming, Blackmagic design, DaVinci Resolve, support, fusion macros. If you're on windows, I don't want to have this in my macros. I wanted to have it in the title folder. So I'm going to click on fusion, go to templates, edit titles. I'm going to create my own folder go into that folder and save it. Close the macro menu. Now, if I go to the edit page, then toolbox titles, I can see my folder tutorial. And as I can see in the inspector, in the title tab, I have my text box, my font, my style, my position and the colors. And if I play it back, my animation runs as I designed it and I can fully control it. And these are 10 tips that also helped me when I started learning text animations in DaVinci Resolve. And yes, there are more tips and tricks and things to learn. But if you want a starting point, check out this video where I teach you five simple text animation techniques that you can apply really fast in your videos. Also, don't forget to drop a comment and let me know what you want to learn next about DaVinci Resolve. And until next time, take care.